minimize this. Over my five years covering World of Warcraft, this is one of the most requested topics. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's because WoW, in trying to please so many people, has pretty much always ended up displeasing others, yeah. making the idea of a fresh slate yep. very appealing for many. Perhaps it's the Classic, allure of reliving the, the good old days, starting afresh in a version of the world that's different from what people know. Well, yep. I think WoW 2.0 will happen, but I don't think it's going to happen in the way that many people will want it to happen. You see, I think you could say that WoW 2 has already happened before many times. I wouldn't be surprised if we were on the precipice of it happening again. Just So I, I think that what he's going to say is he's going to say that WoW 2 started in Cataclysm. What do you guys think about that? WoW 2 started in Cataclysm? Uh, that, that is it too loud to turn down a slight bit. I, I can see where he's coming from. I think that if anything, WoW 3 started in Legion. It's like how you are on the precipice of checking out the Drop.com X Sennheiser PC37X through today's sponsor, Drop.com, formerly known as Mass Drop. The PC37X is the best value gaming headset that I've seen thus far, especially because my link gives you $30 off its already Look incredible at that, price. They are super comfortable that, over ears with zero Let sweat ear pads. Something. These are and actually really nice. Ideal clamping force and These are actually rate, really nice. These are amazing. fantastic for long gaming sessions. Their built-in yep. mic is also brilliant with fantastic articulation and sound quality plus a feature that i really love it actually auto mutes when moved into the upright position there's also a hardware level audio slider on the right cup which is perfect for when you don't want to fiddle around with the windows mixer well, wait, of course, wait, wait, being... wait a minute okay like y'all talk shit about the audio quality etc listen to this shit okay it's a built-in fucking mic every built-in mic sucks a little bit of dick all right it's a headset built-in mic. It is not ideal. Sennheiser is, it is a, they are a very, very high-end, like, sound. Like, they, they make headphones. They make sound systems, right? Sennheiser does stuff like that. They don't make mics, as far as I know, okay? I don't know how to say it, okay? But it, it's, it's basically the same headset that I have. Uh, they make incredible products. This headset, here's what you want in a headset. You want a headset that makes you think that you're not wearing a headset. Sennheiser, you can be darn sure the audio quality punches well above its weight too, yep. making these fantastic both for gaming and for music. So I personally recommend the PC37X available only in drop.com. It's one of the most popular purchases on the site with over 10K purchases and an yep. almost five star review score. Plus you'll score $30 off with my link. Thank you very much drop.com for supporting Agreed. our team and let's get into the video. Agreed. WoW's history, I really very, think, very is good. in three eras with one identity crisis. The original era began in vanilla, lasted through the Burning Crusade, and met its end in very early Wrath, an expansion that started off essentially being a very easy version of an older style of game, but yeah. over the patches became the foundation for World of Warcraft's second era. This era was defined by bring the player, not the class, of changing boss designs, of new formats for world content and player progression, last through the end of Wrath into the Cataclysm before hitting its peak in Mists of Pandaria. Okay. And then we've got the Identity Crisis. From that crisis, we got the new direction of Legion, from which Blizzard stumbled into battle for azeroth and if you compare yeah. the prime versions of each era of warcraft you can see how they're distinct games the original era as compared to mists of pandaria mists of pandaria as compared to legion on the surface they're all world of warcraft but anyone who has played all of them can tell you that they are very different games indeed and if you're looking for WoW 2 to happen, this is how it's going to happen. And this is not going to be satisfying for some who would want... Well, of course not, right? This is the Grizzly Hills Unreal Engine thing. I, I know exactly what he's showing here. Um, so here's an example. And I even said this whenever I was looking at my... I, I made a video back in the day, back whenever I actually made content and then just watch other people's content. Uh, I made a video about Antorus. And I said that whenever I went to the Burning Throne, I felt like I walked into WoW 2. Like the fidelity of the Burning Throne, uh, like not just not the Burning Throne, like the, the raid, but like, you know, whenever you teleport in and you have like that long hallway and like Agrimar's on the other side of the hallway. Whenever I teleported in and I saw that, I was like, holy fuck. 
this is really really good and like just the way that it was designed the fidelity of the image uh, of like the, the the structures and everything the entire thing just looked incredible so i i know exactly what bell you were talking about here wow to a fresh game engine game totally new start yeah after all those unreal engine remakes of old zones have done yep. so well on the internet right well, that's because they're old zones. In terms of artistic cohesion, the Battle for Azeroth zones do blow them out of the water. They the do. use of a cinematic camera in those videos and the nostalgic music is actually what's doing most of the work, plus some pretty nice lighting. Graphically, yes. WoW is doing very yeah, well that, with that its is world. True. Indeed, it's a timeless art style. Just look at how good WoW stands up to other MMOs who've tried to go for more photorealistic visuals. Yep. You see, when you examine WoW's problems, it's not the visuals, it's not really those engine limitations it's the design it's the execution of their ideas that's been the case for all of the good and all of the bad of the last decade a new engine won't fix those problems no. and yes i understand why many want that new engine but a part of that is a lack of understanding many do view engines as being just a single thing and that's not the case as evidenced by their new animation system their new lighting system and many of the other improvements that we've seen an engine i really like bellier's take on this because he's looking at it from a uh, like Bell, you were, you know, he went to college for game design. Like he understands game design on uh, on like a, a, an actual level, right? It's not like he's, you know, like, oh, he's like me, right? I just, I played video games a long time. I have a lot of opinions on it, right? I, I think that he actually understands what game design is. He's made games before and he has like a game development company. So whenever he's saying the things that he's saying, I think that it means a lot more because he's looking at it from a broader context of just what looks cool. And I agree with what he's saying. This is what I was talking about yesterday. Is that do people really want a WoW that looks like this? This is obviously Saudian's farm over in, uh, in Westfall, I believe. Uh, do we want something like this? I think that what people really want is they want a game that makes them feel the way that Vanilla WoW made them feel. I do, however, feel like Blizzard needs to completely flip the board. I, I do disagree with Bellewer on the idea that WoW can transition into WoW 2. I don't think that can happen unless they have basically a an apocalypse event. Like more than Shadowlands where everybody's undead and then they can just come back to life later on. I mean, just like a complete, like everybody's dead. Everything's wiped out. Everything moves forward 50, 100 years, 200 years, 1,000 years. And then everything happens afterwards, right? Time travel, yes is really a bundle of different systems. If anything, WoW's problem is that some of those systems are very new and look great, but other ones are old and don't look as good, and Blizzard need to polish them up. I'll say this and Whenever I say time travel, I don't mean, oh, let's go, let's back to the future of this shit, right? Or like WAD or whatever. I mean, travel forward in time to a period of time. Sorry, that, I, I should not have used that phrase. Uh, but yeah, that's what I mean to say. Character customization in WoW, it's one of the worst parts of the game, and yes. they absolutely need to develop their tech it sucks further. Big dick. But on the systems point, a quick example from our own studio. We're currently working in the Unity engine, but we've developed all of our own systems for things like dynamic water flowing and dynamic lighting oh, for it's 2D like sprites. Mine. Those are things that are beyond that. what the engine can do by itself, and it does not require a new engine refresh to do those things. You just need to make the systems. And that's kind of the point. The WoW engine really is just binding together a bunch of systems porting wow over to unreal 4 is not magically going to get you the wow did you know but with incredible graphics because that's simply not how those things work the no. most basic form of my point is this the game that you play is not the graphics and it does not seem like the mechanics of the engine are holding wow back that greatly while character movement is responsive, inputs are responsive more so than most other MMOs. If that's Blizzard why, developed WoW 2 on that's custom- That's one of the things I want to say this right now. Like Blizzard games, one thing that they do such a good job at is making the game feel responsive and smooth. Like if you play a Blizzard game, you know that because they're responsive and smooth. And that's why one of the reasons why people are so fucking pissed off about Diablo 3 is it was not responsive and smooth. It was not at all, not on release. But WoW is extremely responsive, extremely smooth. Same with Overwatch, same with Heroes of the Storm, uh, you know, Omega Law, whatever, StarCraft, same fucking thing. And it is very, very, very responsive and smooth. And spell batching, that's, they're trying to recreate something so it's different. Engine with incredible rendering technology 
what would still matter would be the quality of the game. Yeah. And that is dictated by its systems and by its design, not how shiny it is. Those are the things that matter, and they don't require a new game engine. And that's why we need to talk about the next big version of World of Warcraft. The level Squish is the perfect jumping off point to discuss this topic. While a Blizzard developer has not confirmed to us that it will happen, Ian Hasakostas, of course, project director for WoW, he did float the idea, and then an official Blizzard survey did say it was coming in the next expansion. So what better way to it. kick off a new era of the game than it. to do a level Squish? What better way to do a level Squish than to also revamp how players interact with the world? And I think Here's what I think they should do. I think that they put way too much work into the zones nowadays. Look at Ra look at look at uh, vanilla, look at Burning Crusade. The zones are so basic. Instead of Blizzard making five really well polished, perfectly clean zones, make twenty vanilla WoW zones. Make fifty of those. I'd rather have twenty or fifty of those. I don't care about the quality. I care about the quantity. We need more content for players to do. 50 pieces of garbage. Oh, oh no, I don't want that. I don't want that. These are the same fucking people that are talking about how, how great, uh, you know, fucking Elwyn Forest was and all of these other old zones. It's not about how intricate and how the, f like the fidelity of the rocks, how many pixels the rocks have. No, that's not what a good game is. It's not about how good, oh wow, the water looks so good. Oh my God, it's like it's real. And then you turn off the game because it's fucking boring. The fact is, they need to make more content and not better content in terms of graphics. We just need more content. More, more, more content. I think this is something that could happen. Fundamentally, I think this would be key to any push for a WoW V2 that actually feels like it to players. Azeroth has become stale. It's no longer that vibrant, expansive world that everyone was immersed in back in the day. Nothing happens outside of the current continent, and yeah, even the current continent really is pretty static as compared to other virtual worlds in the market. Yep. WoW is north of 100 million lifetime accounts, likely far more than that by now, and the vast wow. majority of those accounts are not active. 100 million. What would get them playing? Well, I think being convinced that they can experience Azeroth anew. So first is Level Squish, something that we're fairly sure is actually happening. This could take us yeah, all the way back to level 60 being endgame with our BFA characters being level 50. Is like that, that all though? No. I think Blizzard would have to do more than just a level squish. They'd have to change the world. Now the first way to do that is systems. Having zone-wide events, using the smart NPCs of islands, bonus objectives, perhaps multi-staged events like with what we saw in Guild Wars 2. Essentially a massive change to zones from a systemic perspective. Ideally one that would make them a lot less static. And with those systemic changes locked in, they could they need to do that uh it's very true there's also like the the problem what belly was talking about how like the entire game revolves around the in-game continent completely true blizzard realizes this is a problem it's obvious that blizzard realizes this is a problem because they keep revamping old zones to get people to go back to azeroth so i think it's very clear that blizzard knows this is a problem and by the time that we get through the next expansion over half of azeroth the current azeroth is going to be revamped again and I'm okay with that, by the way. I'm completely okay with that. Because it, it, I now they have the technology to allow people to go back and forth. And I want people to experience the game. And I don't want Blizzard, now that Classic WoW is out, I want Blizzard to feel like Classic WoW, that is your, that's your safety net. So before, Blizzard probably didn't want to make a lot of changes to the game because it would alter the nostalgia that people had for the game. But now, because Classic WoW is out, if people want the nostalgia for the game, they can re-experience that exact same nostalgia. So, go fucking wild. Do something insane. Like, do something that nobody would have expected. Kill the game or make it great again. One way or another, I think they should do something that's amazing would try their hand at a cataclysm-like revamp. It could be under the guise of Nizoth rising up the Black Empire, or it could be very different. It could be a zone revamp 
to the point just after Battle for Azeroth. This would allow them to flesh out the zones, to have them not be homogenized under the same overarching expansion plotline like with what we saw with Cataclysm, and they could avoid the main leveling content be so tied to a specific expansion like the Cata timeline problem. Yep. And I'm light on specifics here because the point is that this is what would signal a new era for WoW. This is the massive change that would grab headlines, that would get people talking about WoW again and potentially bring them back in the middle. Yes. Nailing this would likely get general audiences a lot more excited than just hearing, oh, World of Warcraft's going to have five zones, some dungeons, and a new raid, and that'll happen in wow. a year, and you can pay 60 bucks for it. I think it would get people more hyped than that. So that's, uh, like, the expansion, like, that's what every expansion is. Like, BFA, it came out, I was like, okay. Okay, so we're doing this one again. I'm addicted, I'm gonna keep playing. But I'm going to complain about it. You know, I, that that's the truth, right? And uh, yeah, here's show shit. Here we go again. And it's like, all right, whatever. Blizzard, the next expansion Blizzard brings out. I think they know this. They need to do something fucking crazy. Like, the next expansion comes out. And it's like Shadowlands, like whatever. You know, new, new continent, basically. I think people are just going to be like, okay, whatever. You know, keep playing. It's fine. But they do need to do something crazy. The problem with WoW right now is there's too many rewards in the game. It devalues all the rewards in the game. There's just so many of them. It's like, imagine, like, w would it be cool if we could... If, like, in Classic WoW, like, if you see somebody on a cool mount, it stands out. Like, if I saw somebody over here in Ironforge, and they were riding on, like, the uh, Rivendare's Death Charger, I can guarantee you there would be a circle of people around them. Oh my god, what the fuck? This guy's from Rivendare's Death Charger. Oh my god, what the hell is he so good? Right? They'd be so fucking crazy. Uh, and they'd, they'd be taking screenshots next to them. There'd be probably articles written about this. Like, this would be like a massive big fucking deal. Why is that a big deal? Because there's not a million other epic mounts. If you saw Rivendare's Death Charger and Ashes of Alar, and then next to that there's a Gladiator Drake, and then next to that one there's a goat from Pandaria, then next to the goat from Pandaria there's this new fucking PvP mount that you're able to get from World Quests. Like, all of the mounts are really cool, and nobody cares about any of them. You should make sure that if you have like blizzard has just tried to one-up themselves every expansion with mounts and everything and the problem is that you hit the ceiling with that in terms of people's appeal to different things right like for me i like scourge themed and like undead themed mounts right I, I, that's always been like the main core thing about wow that i've liked so blizzard what they need to do is they need to find a way to erase somebody's collection and then still make them not hate themselves for doing it help hate blizzard for doing it they need to find a way to erase everybody's shit like I, and this is from, from me. From me. They need to erase everybody's shit. One way or another. That's our literal world of Warcraft V2 covered. Well, I suppose V3 of the Cataclysm. But here's the thing, right? It would not do much if we were just dealing with more of the same. And we had a nice little squish, and it was just the world of Warcraft that you knew. Yep. So we must ask ourselves... What would WoW 2, as an ideal, mean for the rest of the game? Well, first, the whole world would have to matter for our max level characters. Now, yep. this could be tied into important reputations. They're continuously updated with new rewards that span the world. Player I'm actually okay with some zones not being relevant at max level. For example, like whenever you're max level in vanilla WoW, there's nothing that's relevant for you to do in Deadmines. Deadmines is done. I think being able to finish content is okay. But I think expansions actively removing all of the other content that's not part of that expansion is not okay. ...should be dealing with multiplayer events, as well as some smaller ones that would interest a solo player in the world. Yep. But it's very important that we don't just get Azeroth, but with world quests everywhere. Blizzard need to work out how to put a sandbox into that theme park... And the world is the ideal place to do that. Yep. But what about gameplay here? Specifically the classes. Well, this is going to be a bit more challenging. Broadly, classes should have more abilities and should have the spec be a flavor of the class and not essentially be its own class. Blizzard have went in the direction of making 36 classes for the game, which does have its pros in them having a very defined style and being very pick up and play, but also cons in terms of player expression. So is it worth- It's also a con because you, if you're a fire Fire Mage and you switch to Frost, you still know what half the abilities do. 
it's like if you if nowadays if you do it like in classic you're able to do that in classic it's like if you're a fire mage you switch to frost it's like what the fuck is all this blue shit you have no idea it's totally different worth sacrificing that tight gameplay design in return for player freedom in some genres the answer is yes in others it's no and i think mmorpgs are a genre where the answer is more often than not player freedom is good beyond the core rotation you should have more niche abilities especially ones that interact with the world and other characters in a way that is unique to your class now talents are a bit tricky here as i do think that blizzard have mostly done a good job of providing you with interesting choices with the current system just maybe not interesting progression so perhaps what they talents are great talent the talents are great the problem is that they're they're only relevant max level blizzard wants to fix the talent system add the talents that are in vanilla wow back into the game and then keep the talents that are currently in the game as well have two different levels of talents have your max level traits and your leveling up talents they could do problem is keep solved. the current talents but add in class-based skill trees maybe wow like what a great idea or just another smaller class-based what, uh, what a great can you believe what a great idea rows in the existing talents. i, to I give totally you more agree things to earn which would be nice and it would also give people totally more of agree. That hybrid fantasy and it would also retain class identity yep. while still having strongly defined specs and then at the end game I've got to admit, I do kind of like the Age of Darkness essence system okay. sort of fake leak. Now, that's also just known as glyphs from back in the day. So, yes. yeah, spruce those up, and you've got some pretty darn good end game customization. Now, as for an infinite leveling system, I do think the next Arrow of WoW will feature that, but I do think the Blizzard will try to divorce it from your character's throughput. You see, I don't like how AP grinds have been at the core of recent expansions. 57 million. This is World million. of Warcraft, this is not Diablo, and they would do well to remember that more. That said, an Arrow... True. Let me say that again. True. Ever refilling endgame XP bar could work out quite well. Now, I've talked in the past about the Guild Wars 2 mastery system a lot, and for good reason. That I disagree, personally. I, I I feel like ever filling experience bars work in some ways, like Paragon reputations, but I don't think that they work as character power progression because it rewards people that know life the game, and it creates a system where players always feel like they're behind and they're losing time by not playing the game. I think one of the good things about Vanilla WoW all the way up into like maybe like WAD or something, even like uh, Legion, is that you could be done with everything for the week. You could be done with everything for the week. And I think that the finality and having an endpoint for me personally, this is like, you know, as a, I'm a completionist type player, um, I, I feel that if there's no end point for me to reach, I don't have the same motivation to begin. It's mostly non-power based progression. Instead, it's focused on other aspects of your character. That game's most recent expansion has eight different mount families, and each one has its own skill tree. That's so awesome. So through these masteries, uh, your I, I love that. can have its That's dismount awesome. ability be stronger, can have it suck in enemies, it can make it jump further, and it can have it augment other mounts. Your griffin can save you from falling, it can swoop down on enemies, and it can have a speed boost. The game's glider has What's similar that, masteries, but there's so much more than that. With mastery also relating to traversal in new zones, unlocking new secrets, new activities, and far more. And this mastery system has allowed ArenaNet to quite easily add on new mastery tracks, new little skill trees with content updates, giving players very, very good, consistent ways to progress their character. This is great. Th this is amazing. Like, have you ever wondered why there are all of these random fucking items that you have to... Oh, well, there's an achievement for you to click all of the fucking... All of the scrolls of the Tortolan around Pandaria. And you have to go over there and click all ten of them. If you do them all, you get a ten points in your achievements. You know, and why is that... Why is that not tied to something like this? Why is it not tied to something like a mountain thing? Blizzard is so hyper-focused on balance and everything like that that this game, I can guarantee you, Guild Wars at the highest level, if it was played on a competitive level like WoW, would be completely imbalanced. And it doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because the game is fun. Classic WoW is fun. People don't, people, everybody playing Classic WoW knows. Everybody that rolls a Moonkin, they know. They know, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be as good as a, uh, as a mage, right? They're not going to be as good as a mage. That's okay, right? That's completely fucking fine. And they still play it because it's what they enjoy and it's what's fun. 
uh, I think Classic WoW serves as an example and proof that balance in a game does not make the game good. You don't have to have balance for a game to be good. Perfect balance. You want to have some degree of balance, but per not perfect balance. And this is all in one system that people understand. Learning things like this on an account-wide basis to me would be so much more enjoyable than just grinding out another concordance rank or getting 3% like more stamina. Jimmy. I mean, seriously, check out the masteries. Guild Wars 2 is not ideal, but that is one of the things they've done really well. So, masteries, a new direction for classes, spruced up talents and endgame gameplay customization that pretty much just amounts to a larger version of glyphs. I think that would be far, far more motivating than the game's current character progression. Past that though, let's uh, scrap mount equipment and maybe give the mounts unique traits on a per-family basis. Let's add some tintable gear to the game. Let's bring back sets. Let's go with it's the good first crafting and a bunch of other things like that. I actually think that sometimes WoW 2 should feel a little bit broken. It's a virtual world. Players should be able to have fun and express themselves. So basically, you know the fun police? Let's just send them into retirement. So, a new world, far better character yep. progression and better player expression. But yep. you know what, speaking of player expression, houses. Yep. I mean, come on, what good is your uh, big dick DPS if you don't have a big dick mansion to back up that DPS with? Hey. And seriously, hey. player housing does not need to have gameplay tied into it, as Blizzard tried to do with their ill-fated garrisons. It just needs yep. to be a totem to the player's achievement, something they can customize, something they have ownership of. Imagine a new player visiting their veteran friend's house. The feeling of aspiration that that new player will have. It's less about having a really cool bed in your virtual house, and it's more about being an incredible tailor who made their own bed. Blizzard have often- Of course. Here's what they need to do. Like Garrison, you know why Garrison suck dick? Is because you just, you completed the whole thing. Like, okay, uh, so you get to go to level one and then uh, you get to level 92 and then now you're level two and uh, you give us 5,000 gold and you're level three. Boom, you're done. Wow, hey, thanks for playing. Oh, wait, you're not anymore? Oh, fuck. What, why do they always keep quitting on me, man? Shit. You know, like, that's what happens, is that it, it happens so fucking fast. All the rank threes for the garrisons were fucking stupid. They didn't really give you hardly anything. It didn't matter. Garrisons would have been fine if they had just made them better. But they keep pandering and catering all the fucking content, like garrisons, to the lowest common denominator of player, and everybody above that gets fucking bored. That's the issue. They All they need to do is just make the game uh, appeal to high-end players again. Make the game make reward make high-end rewards the only thing that garrisons had that were high-end rewards were monuments do you know why nobody cared about monuments because it didn't matter they didn't matter like nobody like they they they, they provided no bonus at all it, it's a joke you guys probably don't even know what monuments are so here, let me give you a couple examples of monuments for one, completing the Warlords of Draenor. Uh, Jimmy, thank you very much, Jimmy. Slime, thank you for the five subs, man. I appreciate that, man. The completing Warlords of Draenor legendary ring quest. Here's another monument. I'm not kidding. Two thousand pet battles in Draenor. Okay. Yeah quite frankly disrespected player expression under the guise of not being gameplay, as we saw with the Certainly garrisons. Not gameplay. And that's totally missing the emotional space that a game care. like World yeah, of Warcraft fills for the classic RPG audience. Sure, sure the game is ran by a pack of theory crafters from the elitist jerks forum, but uh, that's not everyone who plays WoW. Humans are emotionally driven and those drives cannot be captured in a game of weekly to-do lists. And yeah, on that topic, guild halls, let's just do them. They're a testament yeah. to the group's achievements yeah. that is so important sure the gm and the officers in the guild they'll yeah. have a say on its layout but that's not a problem players in guilds have already opted into that hierarchy that's not a valid reason not to do them that i bet it is for blizzard i bet it was like well, well you know if they had a guild and the guild master wanted to build uh a mcdonald's and the other people in the guild wanted a taco bell I mean, we can't have something like that. It's gonna be so confused. They're gonna be so upset. They don't. They're never gonna know what to do. This is. I swear to God, this is the way that Blizzard thinks. They think of basically the the 
interaction between the two stupidest people that play their game and they say to themselves how can we make this as pleasant as possible and what they end up realizing is that you know the best way to make the two stupidest people have a pleasant interaction make sure they don't interact just keep them apart from each other just don't fucking have them do anything right so you can never have a bad interaction if you never interact with anybody uh, that that's all there is to it that is an excuse housing can act even as a resource sink for them just look at runescape a game that has surprisingly well implemented housing to the point where you can actually build a dungeon in your basement it's pretty cool and what's pretty great cool. is adding to these things wouldn't be too hard after all the props are already being made for the games towns cities dungeons and raids by blizzard's yep. amazing art team and that does make them a relatively easy thing to reward players with providing the base system just works so housing deeper classes and revamped world as for the rest well the dungeons and raids in the game are doing really well. I mean, I joked about some of the WoW team coming from the EJ forum a minute ago, but seriously, those guys make incredible dungeons, incredible raids, the best in the industry. And uh, the uh, art yeah. that backs them up is gorgeous. The music is incredible. Yep. So that stuff's actually really, really good in World of Warcraft. And then look- uh, And that's the thing. Yeah, like the dungeons, like Mechagon and everything, like these are huge selling points of the games, right? I mean, like these are huge selling points. These are, this is what makes the game good is the raids and the dungeons uh that that's honestly the main positive thing that uh that current wow has like they make incredible raids like almost every single raid that they make nowadays is really really good same with the dungeons too uh game over i think we should have eight subs man i appreciate that thank you thank you thank you dude Looking at patch 8.2, we already see the early hints the Blizzard are moving away from some of their RNG. Yep. But to be clear, in a WoW 2 feeling expansion, well, less RNG, gear sets, continuing the Benthic gear experiment, and continuing to have interesting gear, like what we saw with Crucible of Storms in patch 8.2. I want more armor now, look, slots. In this video, I've purposefully shied away from specifics because the point here is pretty much that a revamp to class design and progression combined with a revamp of world design and a level squish, as long as those things are all well integrated, plus one or two key features like housing, if that's well put together, the whole point is that would feel like WoW too. You know, maybe put in a fresh UI, a fresh new player experience that isn't, uh, you know, a bit rubbish. And uh, there you go. And hey, if we want some bonuses, work in more player customization for characters. Learn from the past with things like the Mage Tower. If they get those fundamentals yeah, right, awesome. the right title Mage features, Tower's like amazing. the housing, the redo of the world, the redo of the classes, then yep. the WoW 2 from gameplay terms and experiential terms that I think loads of people really want, it's not an impossible thing to happen. It just has to be an expansion that I suppose is emotionally in tune with its intended audience that's paying attention to more things than just the gameplay, that's trying to realize its world, that's trying to elevate the player's own experience rather like than this. pigeonhole the player into a bunch of pretty tightly designed weekly to-do lists. If Blizzard can do yep. that, they seriously could turn this whole show around and really give us a few good, good years. Will they do it? Who the hell knows? But this is basically just what I think about the topic of WoW 2.0. Who the hell knows? Realistically, could actually be. That's uh, pretty accurate right think. there. What is your personal WoW Pretty team? fucking what accurate. In it? Let me know down below. Wow. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I will see you next time. Okay. 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 You know, discuss this solve most problems in a game. I don't think that Ian is like the problem with the game. Okay, man. I really don't.